Hey, this is Math 7, Unit 6, Lesson 17, Modeling with Inequalities. And so we're going to look at some different solutions to the inequalities today and see what makes sense. And that's kind of the big question you want to ask in a lot of these questions is, does it actually make sense? Do you have to have a whole number of something or can you have a fraction part of something um, and still have it make sense here? So in this first situation, it says a stage manager of the school musical is trying to figure out how many sandwiches he can order with 80, the $83 he collected from the cast and crew. Sandwiches cost $5.99 each, okay? So he lets X represent the number of sandwiches he will order and writes $5.99 times the number of sandwiches has to be less than or equal to the $83 he collected. He solves this to two decimal places and gets X has to be less than or equal to 13.86. 13.86, again, the X represents the number of sandwiches he's going to order. So just thinking this through logically, if you go to a, a sandwich shop or restaurant and say, I want to order 13.86 sandwiches, are they going to allow you to order 13.86 sandwiches? Probably not. You probably have to work with whole numbers when you're actually ordering things. Um, that's just typically how that works with our sandwich. It's not really true with all products, but in this case, the sandwich, logically, it makes sense to order with whole numbers. So which of these are valid statements about the situation? He can call the sandwich shop and order exactly 13.86 sandwiches. We would say probably not, probably not. The sandwich shop would probably not give him 0.86 of a sandwich. Not gonna happen most likely. So they'd probably laugh at him. So he'd say no there. He can round up and order 14 sandwiches. Mm, this would be a no. And the reason it is no is because that's gonna be too big. It has to stay under 13.86. So he can't go above that amount. Can he order 12? Yes, he can order 12 for sure, and you have a little extra money left. Can he order 9.5 sandwiches? Well, again, this would be one where he could certainly order nine, he could pay for nine and a half, but will they sell him a half a sandwich? That's a maybe, hard to say. Can he do nine? Yes. Can he do 10? Yes. Can they do nine and a half? That depends on the sandwich shop. Can he order two sandwiches? That would be a yes, he certainly could. And can he order negative four sandwiches? Well, while negative four is indeed less than 13.86, you can't really order a negative sandwich. It doesn't make sense, does it? And that's the key here. It has to also make sense to what you're doing. Just like it doesn't make sense to order 0.86 of a sandwich, it also doesn't make sense to order a negative four sandwiches. It just doesn't make sense. So sometimes with inequality, while you might get a solution, you have to then use some logic to say, does it actually make sense? Could it realistically happen? All right, the second question is about an elevator. It says a mover is loading an elevator with many identical 48 pound boxes. So many identical 48 pound boxes. The mover weighs 185 pounds. The elevator can carry at most, at most 2000 pounds. Write an inequality that says that the mover will not overload the elevator on a particular ride and check your inequality with a partner. Okay, so we take the mover and he's 185 pounds and we're gonna add to that, we have 48 pound boxes. Each box is 48 pounds and we don't know how many of those he has, but we know that it can't go over 2000. So this combination has to be less than or equal to 2000 pounds can't go over that. It could equal it, but that's the most that it could be. To solve this here, we would subtract 185 from both sides. And we end up with 48x is less than or equal to, um, in this case here, um, 1,815. We divide both sides by 48, 48, and we would say x is going to be less than or equal to, and we get a strange number here, it's a decimal. 37.8125. Now again, X represents the number of boxes, okay? These are the number of boxes he could take into the elevator. Is he gonna take in 0.8 of a box? Probably not, he's gonna take in a whole box most likely. So that's what our solution means. It means he can't take in any more than 37.8 boxes is what our solution tells us. So it tells us he can take in 37 or fewer boxes into the elevator is what we know. So graph this here for our solution, we did graph like this. We'd have 37, 38, 36, and we'd actually would say that I can do 37 or less. 
And again, I'm not going to graph the 0 .8, 0 0.8125 over here. I'm not going to graph that spot because there's not a box that is only 0.8125. Either it's a box or it's not a box because they're all identical. All right. So I, I'm going to take a whole box or not a whole box. So that's why I would make the graph be at 37 itself. The fourth question, which is on my next page, is if the mover asks, how many boxes can I load in the elevator at a time? You would say 37 or fewer boxes is what he could do. Couldn't do any more than that. 37 is the max, but he could always take less. All right. In the next activity, it's an activity for your, you and your class. It says your teacher will give you a problem card or data card and don't show your card to your partner. And so you're going to look at the problem and think about information you need to ask from your partner. The data card, answer the questions they ask, but make sure they ask you for a specific piece of information and work those things out so you can solve some problems together with a partner. About giving, it's called giving advice today and you can do that with your partner in your class now. All right, next side, it says summary. Here we go. The big summary today is that we can represent with that we can represent many real world problems with inequalities so we can use inequalities to represent real world problems whenever we write an equality it's important to decide what quantity we're representing with a variable so what does that variable represent and after that we can connect quantities in the situation to write an expression and finally a whole inequality so think through what you're doing but the big thing here is we have to decide if the final answer makes sense in the context of the situation so whatever you end up solving, does it actually make sense? Can you put a half of a box on the elevator? No, it's still a whole box. Can you order 0.8 of a sandwich? Probably not. So think about does it make sense logically? All right, let's pause there and take a moment to do your homework for the day. All right, and here is today's homework, unit six, lesson 17. It says 28 students travel on a field trip. They bring a van that can seat 12 students. Got it. Elena and Karen's teacher asked parents to drive cars that seat three children each and to transport the rest of the students. Elena wonders if she could use the inequality 12 plus 3 in is greater than 28 or 12 plus 3 in is greater than or equal to 28 to figure out how many cars are needed. Okay. Kieran doesn't think it matters in this case. Do you agree with him and explain your reasoning? Well, let's just solve it real quick. Let's do this. If 12 plus 3n is greater than 28, and we solve this, we would subtract 12, and you'd have 3n is greater than, in this case here, 16, divide both sides by 3, and n is greater than 16 over 3, three goes in there five times with one third. So here's our dilemma, is that N stands for what? N is the number of cars. All right, so if this was N can be equal to, equal to, equal to five and a third cars, is that possible? No, five and one third cars is not possible. So we would not be able to actually use this equation because it's not possible. We can't, uh, we can't have kids in a third of a car. It's just not going to work out. It means that we're going to have to have something greater than five and one thirds. We need six cards to make this work. So the, so the equation that she would need, he would need to use is going to be, or Lana needs to use, is this one here. Because that tells me it has to be greater than that amount because you can't have a third of a car. Number two, in the cafeteria, there is one large 10 seat table, 10 seat table, and many smaller four seat tables. So plus four seat tables, and we don't know how many of those. There are enough tables to fit 700 students, uh, 200 students. So all those together is gonna be greater than or equal to 200 students, no problem. All right, um, that's our inequality. This one, five barrels catch rainwater in a schoolyard. Four barrels are the same size, and the fifth barrel, so four times the amount of rainwater, plus the fifth barrel holds 10 liters. All right, so four barrels are gonna catch some amount of water here, and then another one catches 10, 
and that's going to hold at least 200. So it's going to be here greater than or equal to 200 liters of water. So there's our inequality. Now we have two inequalities that look like almost identical. Okay, granted I switched the order of these around, but for the most part, they're the same. So how are they similar? They're similar in the fact that we have the same numbers, the inequality is going the same direction. That's all the same there. If we solve them, we'd end up with the same solution. But how are they different? They're different in terms of the, the does it make sense uh, kind of question, right? Because this one is tables, okay, with letter A, tables need to be whole numbers, right? I can't have a part of a table. It's just not going to work out too well. Now for the B side, I can, because I'm dealing with liters, I can have varying amounts of liters in there. I don't need a whole number there. I can use a fraction. I can have a decimal value. Those are going to be okay in this equation there. So that's the difference is in terms of the logic. Does it make sense? I have to have a whole number solution here. I can use some fractions or decimals here because these are liters and it's what's on the inside. I can have varying amounts of a whole liter inside of a barrel. All right, number three, you're gonna solve these equations here. So for the first one, we're gonna divide both sides by five, right? Negative 60 divided by five is a negative 12. So we have n minus four equals negative 12. Let's add four to both sides. Negative 12 plus four is a negative eight. So that's that one. For B, we have negative 3t plus negative 8 equals 25. I add 8, add 8, so negative 3t equals 33. I divide both sides by negative 3, and t equals negative 11. This one here, we have 7p minus 8 equals negative 22. I add 8, add 8 to both sides, 7p equals negative 14. Divide both sides by seven, and p is equal to negative two. For d, we have two fifths times j plus 40 equals negative four. I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, multiply by the reciprocal, so that j plus 40 equals negative four times five is negative 20, divided by two is negative 10. I'm gonna subtract 40, so that j equals negative 50. And our last one here, 4 times w plus 1 equals negative 6. I could distribute first or I could divide first. It doesn't really make a difference. This becomes w plus 1 equals a negative 3 over 2 or negative 6 fourths. If you want to keep it like that for now, 6 fourths. If I subtract one more from that, um, that becomes w equals, and in this case here, a 1 more is going to be uh, negative 6 over 4 minus a 4 over 4 because that's 1 and that becomes a negative 10 over 4. So that's one solution there. If you want to make that as a mixed number, that would be negative 2 and a half. So that works just fine. Let's turn this to the next page. I select all the inequalities that have the same sign, same graph as x is less than 4. Okay, so x is less than 2, mm, that's just not going to work. Just like here, x is less than 8, that's not going to work. But let's take a look at this one. x plus 6, less than 10. Subtract 6, subtract 6, x is now less than 4, that works great. We have 5x less than 20, divide both sides by 5, x is less than 4, that works. And here, x minus 2 is greater than 2, we add 2 to both sides x is greater than 4, be careful, that's going the wrong direction. We want to be less than 4, so that won't work. And finally, number 5, our last one for the day. A 200 pound person weighs 33 pounds on the moon. How much did the weight decrease? So we're going to do 200 minus the 33 to see what the decrease was. All right, so that becomes 10, 9, 10, 7, 6. So the decrease was a 167 pound decrease. That's how much they decrease. By what percentage did the weight decrease? Okay, so this percentage is gonna be the decrease minus the original, or sorry, divided by the original. So our, decrease, our percentage is decreased divided by the original. 167 divided by 200 is equal to 0 0.835. And so I wanna make that into a percentage. We move it over two spots. 
and we have 83.5 percent or if you wanted to round it up you could round it up and just say it's about 84 percent up to you so both answers would be okay for me Alrighty, and that's it for today. We will see you next time.